So welcome back. Um, we now have Stacey Bragger, who is actually standing for Stanley. Um, you've already done, done one spell already in Stanley. And um, what skills do you actually bring to the, uh, to the assembly? Um, and what portfolios? Will you, do you want the same portfolios or do you want to change your portfolios? Yeah, thanks, Richard. Um, basically, when it comes to the, the role of MLA, I think, um, firstly, I have the experience now of four years of uh, helping be part of the team that's guided us through a fairly challenging period with, with COVID and everything, where we're making very big decisions. So I think having that sort of experience has really um, allowed me to, to really uh, develop myself in the role. And um, I think I'll be better placed going into a second term if elected. I think personally speaking, I've got the, the energy and the, and the vision and the, the commitment. Um, it's not about me, it's not about furthering my own ego, it's just about delivering the best possible results for the Falklands. And um, I think we've got a really positive future as a, as a community. So I think um, I'm ideally suited in uh, trying to have a, a fresh, positive approach. When it comes to the portfolio, I would, uh, I would like to have education again. It's um, something I'm truly passionate about and I really enjoyed. Whilst it is a, a, a challenging portfolio, it is something that I really enjoyed having and was something I was really proud to be a part of. I think I made some really good progress in a number of key areas, really delivered some really good results for the, the portfolio. So that's something that I would uh, be really keen on taking again if elected. All right. And, and what are the major issues that you're going to have to deal with with the next assembly? I think for the next assembly is about not losing any momentum. It's about making sure that progress is continued, continued to be made on a, a number of key projects and a number of key pieces of work. So I think the, the new assembly will have to form, form a vision as quickly as possible and really try not to um, let things slip with a, with a changeover. So I think there's key capital projects like the port and the power station that really need to be pushed forward. And um, also I think a, another key issue for the Falklands over the next few months will be the uh, continued response to COVID and also the, uh, the in international air connectivity and uh, whether flights from South America start up next year. So I think that'll be one of the, one of the first things probably on, on the agenda for the, the next assembly. After the election, you're, you should be quite aware of what the opinions of the public are. Um, if elected, what, what would you um, do to, to remain aware of the, the public's... There's a lot of silent public. Yeah, I, th I think it's, like, it's quite a tricky one because at the start of the last assembly we, we tried a, a number of new things and some worked and some didn't and um, I'd be open to, to hearing from people what would work better for them. I think, um, I, I think Facebook isn't t totally representative of, of the community so I think, um, I think it's about trying to find different ways to, to engage with people. Personally when I was an MLA I held um, several focus group sessions just where I hired a venue and then invited people to come along and meet with me to talk informally. That would sort of work to, to an extent, but I think as an MLA, what I've learned is that people are very open about expressing their opinions of you when you're in the West or the Chandlery or just anywhere else. So I think it's about trying to make sure that you, you feel that, you've, um, that you're continuing to hear from people on a, on a range of issues. There are a large, a, a large number of uh, essential capital infrastructure projects underway such as the port and power station, Tussock House and such like. Do you have any thoughts as to how these should be funded? Yes, um, for me they are absolutely critical projects for the Falklands and our, and our future. So rather than spend years talking about what we can do with them, I think we need to deliver those projects. And so a lot of work had taken place in the last assembly about pushing those projects forward, particularly the, the port and power station. And obviously part of that, the a key thing behind that is is the financing. From the figures I saw in the last assembly, it was totally affordable for the islands to continue those those projects, and it would meet the uh, the, the current policy of two and a half times um, recurrent expenditure in in the bank. So the Falklands government has money in the bank, but I think there would be there would have to be work has taken place with a um, with a financial package in terms of getting the the money together to to be able to deliver those projects. And for me, that is not something to be worried about. It's not something to fear because for me, it's the same as 
when you buy a house, you get a mortgage, you're investing in your future. So I think for me, we have to invest in our future as a community. So I think something like that and borrowing a certain amount of money in a way that is affordable and measured is uh, not a step you take lightly, but it's something I think that needs to be done to make sure that we deliver rather than talk about these projects. One of the most common issues discussed by the electorate this, this time is the salmon, the possible salmon farming. This could become a valuable industry for the Falklands, but also it is coupled with dire warnings of pollution and uh, um, such like. So uh, do you have any comments? Yes, I do. Um, from the very first meeting that we had on this um, proposal three or four years ago as is in, the, in the Assembly, it's, um, it's not something that I've been in favour of. It's something that I have grave concerns about. And for me, it isn't something that sits with the, uh, the commitments I make in my manifesto about preserving our environment for future generations. The last Assembly committed to a, a process of, uh, of investigating the proposal from all the different aspects, legal, environmental. And so the, the Assembly, the next Assembly will be looking at that. But for me, it's not something that I would be in favour of. And I think for me, well, it's obviously economic issues are important. It's not the only thing and it doesn't come at any cost, economic development. And I think that that piece of work that is underway has to include public opinion and public consultation and what the public's views are on it. So for me, as I say, a process is underway, but it's not something I personally feel I could support. Communications has become, uh, particularly the speed of the internet, has become quite a major issue around. Um, <clears throat> how can the Falklands improve the, uh, or receive the same quality as what is expected around the world? Yes, I mean, uh, for me, telecommunications are as important as, as roads or, or buildings in terms of the, uh, the economic and social development of the islands. So it's um, obviously the Falklands, we're... We're tied into the, the agreement that was signed by the, the previous assembly to us, but I think the, the government's technology development group has to, has to be pushing of what the, the, the new advancements are in, in technology, what can we utilise and uh, take advantage of to, to, uh, to help improve the, uh, the communications of the Falklands. So I think that's something that government needs to be pushing sure on, making sure that they are investigating these possible options. And uh, for me, it's a, an issue of critical importance. And I think that the Falklands needs to have a, a clear roadmap of what we're hoping to achieve in terms of a vision of communications for the future. Support for camp education is a subject which came up a Farmers Week and created quite a bit of criticism. <clears throat> How do you think this should be addressed? Well, that was obviously with my portfolio, something I was, I was yeah. very involved with at the last assembly. <clears throat> and um, I think in terms of is camp education well resourced for me, the, the, the facts are that 20% of the IGS and Camp Ed's budget is, uh, is allocated to 7% for children. So for me, it's not a case of being under-resourced. I think for, for me, the attainment of camp education children is, is very high. And there's also, um, I think it's something that, I think at the moment, there is an issue where there is a lack of clarity in terms of policy and there are some some anomalies in terms of who gets what from, from settlement to settlement or, or, or to farm to farm. So I think the, the camp education review that I was pushing on towards the end of the last assembly, that's going to be coming forward in the, the first quarter of next year. So I think that's the ideal opportunity to really get everyone together, family, the department, the, the wider rural community about what's, what's the best way forward for camp education because it's a, a vital and um, is a vital part of the education system here in the Falklands and something that I think we should very be very proud of. It's totally unique yes. and very special. Climate change is becoming an issue that just can't be ignored these days. What steps should the Falklands take to make the islands more carbon neutral? Given what renewable energy, how the renewable energy has developed over the last few years, would you support the development of a new power station mainly based on renewable resources. Yes I would. I think um, that the new power station project has to have more capability of being able to incorporate renewables. It's, it's the way of the future, that's the way, the way the world is going. Obviously here we're a remote community so we need to make sure that our power supplies are, are resilient but it's definitely something renewables I think we need to push push harder on. When it comes to 
the environment altogether. I think it's a, a real opportunity for the Falklands. It's not something to worry about. I think there's a lot of opportunities for us in, in embracing the, the green agenda. So for me, we have a, a new environment strategy that the, the last assembly uh, agreed to, towards the, the end of, of, of our term. So for me, it's about making sure that we don't just have a, a high level policy. It's about going to the next stage of actually delivering action and having uh, very clear practical steps. The Falklands Conservation have actually uh, produced a document, 2021 uh, <coughs> election, getting the green vote, laying out their ideas on um, a green election. Are you aware of the document and do you support the concepts that they um, promote? Yes, uh, I am aware of the document and I, I do support it. And I think if you take a look at that document and then my manifesto, they're very much in line. Yeah. One, of my, one of my key priorities is environment and making sure that environmental policy is at the heart of government decision making because that's the way of the future. We need to, to move in that direction. So for me, um, I'm very much in line with, um, with that. And I think from my feeling, that's the way the community wants us to go forward and to make sure that we make significant long-term progress in, in doing, doing more and, do, and doing a better job when it comes to the environment. Yes. There's been some criticism for, about the uh, pensions that still fall well below the living wage. In view of the fact that during their working years, many present pensioners did not have the opportunity um, to purchase a personal pension schemes, and those that did, the income is derisory. How should this addition... Uh, it, uh, how should this be addressed? No, I totally appreciate what you say about the pensions issue. It's something that's been raised to me for the last few months, and I totally understand people's concerns about it. I think the opportunity now is that there's a review going to be happening early next year, and for me, that will be a key piece of work that will need to happen if elected. And I think there's, a, I think we can get a more satisfactory outcome, hopefully, because as you say probably not where we need to be in terms of um, pensions. So I think that's something we need a more progressive system, but also one that's affordable for the islands. Uh, so it's been suggested by various people that members spend too much time overseas and not enough on local issues. Do you have any comment? And if you elected, would you still be willing to travel overseas? Yeah, if, if elected, I'd be willing to do my share of the work. And um, I think obviously with COVID, we didn't go away as much as probably have been happening in the, in the last few years. But I think it's, it's, a, it's a balance because we need MLAs here doing the actual day-to-day -day work. But I'd rather MLAs, elected members, were away representing the Falklands in international forums rather than someone else doing it on our behalf. So for me, I didn't do as much of the OC stuff as some of my, of my, of my colleagues. But it's something that I'll be perfectly willing to do, and I think I'm more than capable of doing a good job with it. Stacey, your time's run out, but thank you very much for that. Thank you.